I'm Cindy Vandover and I am a deep sea explorer and I am a professor at Duke University. I think my recollect recollection is I did it within a year. It normally takes longer, but I was um, highly motivated. To be a pilot, you have to be able to, you have to know the submarine inside and out and be able to contribute to its maintenance and fix things when they go wrong. Um, I had to learn a lot of things that I never knew before, so I was trained as a scientist. I wasn't trained as someone to, to um, who would use a screwdriver and fix something. It was the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. It was um, intense. I, I would go on any cruise that would have me that was, it was always with Alvin. Uh, and so I was out with geologists as an as a, you know, extra person. If there was an empty bunk, I was in it. So it took me a long time to dive. So I went on cruise after cruise after cruise as a, as a nobody, as, a, as the lowest person on the boat. And I saw lots of people dive and not me. And it was just killing me. And not, not in a bad way, but I just, I was, I just so desperately wanted to dive. I was just trying to say how much I wanted that dive to be on the sea floor. It was everything to me. And so the night before, I think everybody must go through this the night before. How could you possibly sleep your first dive? You're going to be on the sea floor, especially if this was your whole passion. How could you sleep? So I remember you know, looking out over the rail at the water and imagining, just trying to imagine what it'd be like to be on the seafloor in that patch that, that, because normally you look at that water and you don't remember that there's a seabed down there. And so I was just very conscious of that, didn't sleep, got in the submarine, just, I mean, wired like you wouldn't believe. And, um, and we got down to the seafloor and they turned on the light, or yeah, they don't have the lights on until you approach the seafloor, and then you have to stare out and say, let them know, let the pilot know, up, oh, bottom's in sight, and, and, and then you go to work. Um, and we landed right on tube worms. So they just discovered hydrothermal vents in these tube worms two years before. Navigation was difficult, so you never knew if you were going to end up on a vent or not, but my recollection is we did drop down on this site within minutes we were at the tube worms. And they were, I mean, it's like life on another planet. Especially back then, nobody had ever dreamt something like this animal could exist before. And there they were, big giant white tubes and the red plume on top and muscles climbing around. Oh, it's just amazing, just amazing. For the deep sea, it's not so easy to get there. And what I saw was that the scientists go out once a year, twice a year if you're really aggressive and ambitious, um, maybe once every five years, and you go to your dive site, you don't get to dive around the world. So who is seeing all of the seafloor all the time? It's the pilots. So if I wanted to be a good ecologist, the obvious thing was to be a pilot because then I would see, that I would live basically in this world that I wanted to study. And, um, and I was hungry, I was really hungry to, to know what was on the seafloor and to see it in lots of places. You know, if you go out without knowing how the sub works and the ship works, you could get some science done. But I really felt I wanted to know how to use the submarine well and that this time as a pilot would really, I'd be exposed to lots of different scientists coming on board and I could take the best of all their practices, right? And, and learn how to be really good at using the submarine. I had been out doing all this um, time at sea with the Alvin guys and I had mentioned that, oh, I'd really love to be an Alvin pilot. And they said something like, well, if you want to be a pilot, you'd be up at five in the morning and helping us get the sub ready. I was like, really, can I do that? <laughs> you're let me, you would let me touch the vehicle. And so I would get up at five or whatever, 5.30, and join them, and they gave me little tasks to do, like I polished the windows, the, you know, the viewports, which, you know, was pretty cool that they let me do that. And I helped hang the weights, and I, you know, I did just grunt work. I'd work half a day working on my dissertation, and the other half I'd go over to the Alvin group, and I would follow the pilots around and the techs as they rebuilt the submarine. And each protocol that they did, I would get notes from the pilot, my own observations. I would go to AutoCAD, make diagrams of what they were working on, and put together the maintenance manual. So I did the first draft maintenance manual for Alvin. I kind of say I got in through, I call it the back door, maybe it was a front door, I don't know. But anyway, I got in the door that way by, by just volunteering and doing this maintenance manual and, and hanging out with the guys. And the other thing is you have to, you do have to know, this, build all the systems in the submarine. So there's, I don't know, at the time there was 
10 or 12 different systems. So the life support system, the variable ballast system, the, the emergency release system, it goes on and on. Uh, and each one of those, you had to be able to draw the diagram of, of how it worked. And uh, one of the biggest things to memorize was what was called the one-line diagram. And you could start a picture a big, large lecture hall with a number of whiteboards across. And you could start at one end, and you start with the battery, the big batteries that run the submarine, and you draw the whole basic wiring system for the whole submarine out to the thing, that, the switch that moves the fingers. That was part of the exam, draw the one-line diagram for the submarine. And you had to know the, the fuses and, the, and, the, and the, just everything about the it's all gone from my mind now, don't ask me a question about that, but I, I knew it at the time. So certainly all pilots in training pits, as they are known, um, are hazed. Uh, and in gentle ways for the most part. Um, so it's not, you know, it's not, a, not nasty, dirty. Um, but I found as time went on, as I was trying to learn this, that I was um, there were a couple of guys who I felt were very, very um, unhappy with me wanting to be a pilot for whatever reason. And they did make, I, I thought they made my life more difficult than it needed to be, it, even to the point of, I thought, telling me wrong answers. It was hard. I, and I, there were cruises most of the time towards the middle and end, I would cry myself to sleep because it was so difficult. And I, you know, somehow I, I just, I felt an obligation to my gender. And I'm not, you know, I'm not a raging feminist or anything. I just felt, boy, if I fail at this, I'm gonna be letting down myself. And, and I just felt I was letting, wouldn't let down a lot of people. And then what's been really fun is, you know, the investment down the road and all the things I've been able to do from the scientific side, knowing the submarine the way I do. So the work with the new Alvin design, you know, being the chair of the oversight committee, science oversight committee for the redesign, rebuild of Alvin. It's, you know, there's things that come along that it's, it's still paying back, I think, the investment they made in me.